miracles that took place in Oklahoma. Two and three and four and five members of one family being killed at one time. Think for a moment as you look around your families around you. What would you feel like to lose? I don't know what talking to a family the other day. They said they had eight children and one on the way. I talked to one at the motel the other day. She said, I have seven children. Can you imagine losing five members, three members, four members of your family in one accident or in one tornado or in one uh, act of gun violence perhaps in a public place? If you've read about the school shootings, Columbine, other places, the colleges around our nations, more recently the movie theater, the political rally that helped was helped even, I think, in New Mexico where there was uh, those that were taken down in the political rallies. I'm telling you, church, amen, there's some things that hell has unleashed a fury on the United States of America. Amen. Every time we turn around, there's something else going on. There's family violence and there's crime. Amen. I read accounts and now, and, and it disturbs me any time you read of a, of a person committing a crime, whether it's a young person or an old person. But what's really been disturbing me of late as I'm reading accounts where fathers are taking their teenage sons or their 20 year old sons or even their 30 year old sons and a father and a son are committing violence together as a team. I read accounts recently where mothers have taken their sons and their daughters and they've arrested the mother and the sons and the daughters because they've been involved together in a crime. I read an account just a while back where a grandmother and her grandchildren were arrested for selling drugs on the streets and the grandmother was a part of the team in selling and the deliverance of drugs and they arrested the grandmother and the grandchildren. This is America that we live in, church. I'm not trying to tell you how, how horrible a place it is we live. I'm trying to tell you that the gates of hell cannot prevail, amen, against the church and against those of us who love God. I'm trying to point you out that there's some things that are going on, amen, that ought to grasp our attention, but to be aware of this fact that no matter what goes on around us, God's still with us. Amen. I'm seeing some terrible things happen. I hear it. I see it on my phone. The brethren I run with are laughing. Brother John Michael, Brother Flannery, laughing because they teased me about just recently having come in the 21st century with my iPhone. It took me till just a, just a short time ago that I even knew how to send my first text. And I'm little by little learning how to do things on the phone. They said, man, Brother Harris, you're coming right along. But as I begin to look, I begin to find every day at different accounts of the various things that are taking place around us. Let me share with you this evening a few statistics, amen, about crime in America. Amen. Did you know that uh, one of every five Americans is going to find themselves having crime committed against them in America every single day? One of every five Americans has some act of, of crime committed against them in America every single day. Approximately 12 million crimes are committed every year in the United States, the worst in the world. No other nation has over 6 million reported acts of crime. Car theft in America is up 83%, robberies 50%, burglaries 20%, property destruction 42%, homicides 22%. 2.2 million people are in prison in America. The U.S. has 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's incarcerated population. 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's incarcerated population are in the United States of America. One million members of criminal gangs which are responsible for 80% of the crimes in, are, that are committed in the United States each year. Over 100,000 rapes the highest for any country in the United Nations. Maybe the statistic about one of five. It's higher than any other nation. A rate that's higher than any other nation. One third to one half of marriages in a divorce. In America, a woman under the age of 20 that gets married is more likely to find herself ending in divorce. Couples who live together. I'm constantly hearing people say, well, we were told that if we lived together first then, and then we tried it out, we could decide whether marriage was for us or not, whether it worked or not. There is statistics out that say that couples who live together before marriage are more likely to end in divorce once they commit 
to marriage. Don't let Satan feed you with the lies that he wants to feed you, church. You can't believe everything you hear. Right. That's right. The U.S. has the highest percentage of teenage pregnancies of any Western industrialized nation. 79% of teen pregnancies are married. 25 of teen pregnancies have a second child within two years of the first birth. 8.3% of all people aged 12 and over involved in the use of illegal drugs, of the non-medical use of prescription drugs. Approximately 2.4 million people in the U.S. use some kind of illicit drug in the past 30 days. 14.8 million people in the United States use marijuana. Two uh, have, have used or are using marijuana. 2.4 million have used or are using cocaine. 1 million have used or are using hallucinogens, including ecstasy. Methamphetamines, 70, 731,000 users. 7,000,000 non-medical prescription drug users in the United States. 5.2 million users of painkillers in America. And I'm going to tell you something. You say, well, you know, painkillers, what, what damage does that do? Ask Sister Harris, who lost a sister to an addiction to painkillers. Church, I'm talking about things that are happening in America. Hell has unleashed a fury. But I'm going to tell you in the midst of it, hell can't prevail. Amen. In 2011, the murder rate per 100,000 people, the highest in our nation was 11.2% in uh, Louisiana. The next highest state was a, a state in America to hit this 100,000 is race show was a state by the name of New Mexico. At 7.5%. And Texas at 4.4. It was in the 80s, the 1980s, that the city that I live in, Odessa, received the horrible distinction of being the murder capital of the United States of America, having more murders in the city that I live in per 100,000 population than any city in the United States of America. 115 children a year are kidnapped by a stranger. The numbers are staggering. And I started to write all this down. I thought, I'll be here all night. But the numbers are staggering of kidnapped children by a parent, custodial parent, or a relative. It was up in the quarter of a million children that are kidnapped by a parent, custodial parent, or a relative. 3.3 million reports of child abuse involving nearly 6 million children. Church, I'm going to tell you, there are some things going on in America that do not need to be going on. Right. We're living in a place and a time. I'll go back to the scriptures in a moment. But I want to read some things to you. It says that hell can pass. It's surrounded. It was to go around, to achieve, to contrive, to despise, to, to devise, to bring about, to manage. We're seeing things happen in America that are disturbing. Every time we turn around, someone's wanting to take prayer out of our schools or out of, uh, out of the public altogether. To take in God we trust, amen, out of the currency, out of the currencies that we have. One nation under God, they want to remove under God. It was in a, this, just this year, graduation ceremonies. A high school senior, the valedictorian of his high school, Asked the solitary and others in his group what they thought about saying a prayer even though the school board of the district that he lived in said it was against the law to, for them to do so. Asked what it would be like to, to go ahead and say a prayer at their graduation. It was their graduation. Why couldn't they do what they wanted to? The solitary says, no, I don't think we need to do this. Well, the, the valedictorian took his his uh, uh, message, his little note that he wrote up to be approved. They had to have an approved uh, presentation. He took that up. He had it approved by the principal and the reciting parties of his high school. Members of the school board approved his speech that he was to give that night at his graduation service. But he said that as he approached the, the podium, 
He looked out over the group. He talked to several of his senior groups, that members of the senior uh, group that he was graduating with, and many of them agreed that he needed to say a prayer. He walked up to the podium that, to give his speech, and as he stood there before them, he looked out over the congregation. He, he, he talked to his family, he talked to various ones. He said, I'm tired of Satan dying to dictate my life. I'm tired of Satan trying to tell me what I can and what I cannot do. And as he stood there, he lifted it up and he took his feet. Then he had his hands and he began to rip it and tear it up to pieces and throw his feet off to the side. The school board was sitting on the front row with a whole row on them right across the front. He looked over at another one of them staring at him like, what in the world have you just done? What do you call yourself doing? This young man wasn't through. He said, I've got something for you. He said, I've got something I think that you need to hear. And so he said, let me, let me do this for you. And so he turned in his Bible and he began to read, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> oh yeah, church. Amen. He began to recite the prayer. Amen. They did the same thing that you're doing. They began to stand and they began to applaud. Amen. They began to whistle. They began to scream out. Someone ought to give their praise up to God. Amen. He recited their prayer. He said, I'm not letting that be taken away from me. Amen. And in spite Amen. Of what he was told that he could not do. Amen. He went ahead. Amen. And he, he, gave, his, he gave it anyways. Amen. He read the entire prayer to him. Amen. It's found two places in the scripture. Matthew chapter 6. And again, Luke chapter 11. Amen. He got started. Amen. He just read it through. He wanted to hear it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And the groups in his party began to rise and applaud and scream and cheer and whistle. Amen. It showed a, a, a new, in the newscast, it showed the school board sitting on the front row. And I mean, they looked like they were made out of concrete. They looked like they were made out of wood. They were stone-faced. They all looked at like, I cannot believe you just did what you did. But there was one in the group. <laughs> there was one in the group. The, the president, amen, of the school board. And she looked just the superintendent of the school. She looked just like sister, as I've said up front. She smiled from ear to ear. Never said a word, but the entire time. Never raised her hand, never moved. But she smiled from ear to ear the whole time that he said the prayer. They asked him later, said, what do they think they're going to do to you? He says, don't know, don't really care. But they went to the superintendent. The school board was, they were mad. They went to the school board, got together. They got together the principal, the leaders of the school. And they said, what are you going to do about it? And they asked the superintendent, what do you intend to do about it? She thought for a moment. She says, what can I do? He's not a member of my school. He's a graduate. <laughs> Sometimes, church, you just got to step out. Amen. And we got to realize hell can't prevail. <laughs> And sometimes you just got to stand there and realize hell can't prevail. Amen. Amen. Oh, I read the account of the three ladies that were kidnapped. It just breaks my heart to know they were raped. One of them gave birth and then had, was forced to have an abortion and the baby to be murdered. The guy that's arrested is arrested now for murder, for kidnapping, for... Uh, uh, sexual assault for I, 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 I wrote a lot of that down whole list of stuff that he's involved in San Antonio, Texas the other day a 19 year old got on and advertised a young lady is 20 as an escort showed a picture of her they didn't think she looked 20 so they investigated and found out she was an underage child she was under the age of 17 years of age they had kidnapped her. They were, they were traffickers of people. They had forced this young lady into prostitution. And they were advertising her on the internet as an escort, as an adult escort. This is some things that are going on around you, church. There's some things in our nation that we don't like to talk about or we don't want to hear. Or we, we think, well, if it doesn't affect my life, 
then it's not of my concern. You know, but so often what we don't realize is sometimes if we dig far enough, it does affect our families. Amen. We may have a loved one that's been forced into that or forced uh, into drugs or, or is doing drugs or, 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 or is an alcoholic and controlled by the demon of alcohol is there, or even some type of an act of crime or sin. And yes, it does affect us. Amen. Begin to think about the scripture says, hell shall not prevail. This expresses determination, determining, compulsation, obligation, necessity, habit, expression, would, should, will. I thought about it for a moment. I'm just saying it this way, church. Sorry, but sometimes we're just, we're just country folk out here sometimes, okay? If I wrote the scripture, it'd be something like this, Brother Flannery. Hell can't prevail. Hell can't, 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 can't prevail. It won't happen. Uh-uh. No way. Ain't happening. Not today or ever. Not on my watch. Not while there's still an apostolic church on this earth. Satan, you might as well get over it and move on. Amen. Amen. Get thee behind me. Get thee behind us for this church, this apostolic church, this one God apostolic church, this one true church is moving on up. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're moving on up. Amen. We are not going to allow all this to come against us. Amen. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Sister, I know we're not her name, but I cannot think of it. Sister White, I walked into the prayer room tonight while you were praying. I stopped. I listened to your prayer for a moment. I began to cry and I walked out. One, because you prayed for me and that touched my heart. I just happened to walk in as you started praying for me. That meant a lot to me. Secondly, you stole one of my verses of Scripture. Just wanted to let you know. Amen. I'll get to Brother Fanny's theft a little later on. But as you were praying... I heard you use this verse, 1 John 4 and 4. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. Amen. I've written down Romans chapter 8 verse 31. If God be for us, who then can be against us? Amen. Isaiah chapter 59. Brother Fannery, would you get your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 59 and read verse 18 and 19? You might as well read it for me last night. You stole it from me anyways. I looked over at my wife. I said, now he's not only trying to preach my message, he's trying to steal my verses of Scripture. Amen. Isaiah 59, verse 18, 19. And, oh, no, you use rise up like standard against. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. How did you let raise up a standard? How did you use a standard last night? You said raise up a standard. According to their deeds, according, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemy. To the islands he will repay, he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against, against him. him. And that's the one I heard you mention last night. Where he said a standard against him. Amen. I heard you mention that one portion of the scripture last night. Amen. Sister Harris, would you stand and read Psalms 116, verse 3? Amen. 116, verse 3. Amen. James chapter 4 and verse 7 resists the devil yes. and he will flee. Yes. Hallelujah. Have you believed that tonight? Hallelujah. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And he will flee from you. Amen. 
But church, I've told you these things, and I've given you these statistics this evening for one reason. Mr. Harris, as you come to the piano. I don't know if it's as warm out there as it is up here, but I got water running all the way down. I can feel it. Amen. You know what, church? But in the midst of all this, right. hell can't prevail. Right. Right. No way. Uh -uh. Ain't happening. Not on my watch. Not as long as there's an apostolic church. Come on. Because, Brother John Michael, would you stand? Sister Amy, where are you? Is she in here? She's busy. busy. Amen. Brother John Michael, four years ago, built New Hope Pentecostal Church. And it still stands today. Come up here, Bible, bro. I, 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 need, I need you by. Still stands today as a light beacon to the city of Gallup, New Mexico. And you know the message I like that he uses? I'm not, I don't know, Sister Harris, can we sing it? Well, I'm a one God apostate. <laughs> she's, she, she's not even going to help me. We used to sing it together. I'll do it for you. It says, I'm a one God apostolic tongue talking, holy rolling, heaven bound, born again believer in the liberating power of Jesus' name. I've been washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit. I believe in holiness, and I suggest you do the same. I was set free in a Pentecostal altar on my knees. And brother, I'm not ashamed to be a one God apostolic tongue talking, holy road, heaven bound, born again believer, liberating power of Jesus' name. Well, I'm a one God apostolic tongue talking, holy road, and heaven bound, born again believer, in the liberating power. Jesus' name. I've been washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit. I believe in holiness, and I suggest that you do the same. I was set free at a Pentecostal altar on my knees. And brother, I'm not ashamed to be a one God apostolic tongue talking, holy road, heaven the born again believer, the liberating power of Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the spot of all, oh, I know the verse I'm thinking of. Too. I've been standing. I know the one I'm thinking of. You used last night. First Corinthians chapter 10, wave of escape. That's the one you used. Right. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah. Amen. I, mean, I heard you mention standing here, Brother uh, John Michael, once. One you used to. Amen. You can be seated just for a moment. I'm almost three. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 5 through verse 14. This is the one Brother Flannery used. Amen. I mean, one of them last night mentioned standard. But he used this one. Amen. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Amen. Many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Yeah. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur you as some of them also murmured or destroyed of the destroyer. These things happen to them for examples. They're written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. But this verse, verse 13, there is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that that you are able. But with temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. i got a real simple song I want to sing for you. You can join with me if you'd like. Satan, you can't win. You can't be victorious. You can't triumph. All this that goes on, I still serve a God. Brother Flannery said last night, he'll put all this under my feet. 
And I want you to sing a song with me. If you would, you can stand if you'd like. We don't sing it often in church. Maybe we ought to. It's simply in time. I looked it up thinking there was more verses and all we found was just this. Maybe this is the song. It's simply in time. God bless America. Amen. We see enough of the problems in America. How many of you like to see God bless America again? Amen. Can we sing this on this fourth anniversary? In this church, the stewards are built and continue to work in. We can still have a place to come and worship and feel the presence of God. Sing it with me if you would. finish with one more song. You see, how many are glad to be in this church tonight? How many are glad tonight that in the midst of all that goes on around us and all these statistics I shared with you, that we know that God can't prevail? How many are standing with me? He can't. He won't. Uh-uh. Ain't happening. Not on my watch. As long as there's an apostolic church, Satan, you're not going to prevail. And there's a reason for that, and that is this. I'm in this church, y'all. I'm in this apostolic church. I'm in this church from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I said, I'm in this church from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I am wrapped up, I am tied up, and I'm tangled up in this church. Four years. Oh, one more thing I left out. Be seated for a moment. I want us to sing a song. You're fixing to come down. You're fixing to worship. Just get ready. You got your engines revving? Go ahead and rev your engines. Go ahead and rev, rev, rev your engines for a moment. Rev your engines for a moment. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some more bad statistics. I'm going to give you a reason to shout. We're going to sing this song here in a moment. I'm in the church. Less than 20, the last time I was here, Brother John Michael, I preached from the church. You remember I told you that one of every three churches started in America will fail within the first to the third year. That as long as you stood in and made it for three years, your chances increased tremendously of this remaining the church. The reason for that is after three years, he knows who he's got in this congregation, who he can trust, who he can't trust, who's serving God, who's not going to serve God, who will, who won't, who can, who just can't do it. Already I've seen, boy, this, this group, you get the prayer team back here. In tune. In tune, stand up. If you're a member of In tune, stand up. Yo, I had a part in that. That's In tune. That's their praise team. You see, you can build on that after three years. You can't do that in the first sake, two years. You don't know nothing about nobody. Less than 20% of Americans attend church regularly. Less than 20% of Americans attend church regularly. I'm not talking about the ones that come on Christmas and Easter. I'm not talking about the ones that come on Sunday morning and you don't see them again the next Sunday morning. I'm talking about the ones that come every time the church doors open. Less than 20% of Americans attend church regularly. 3,500 to 4,000 churches close their door every year in America. They say that the open doors, it opens pretty close to the same number. But boy, some of the things that are open today they call church scares me to death.
Most church closings in the first third, uh, the first of the third year after opening. Amen. But you know what, church? You got a church here that was built on a rock. This church was built on a rock. This church has got some foundation under it. This church has got some truth under it. Amen. You can sit. We sat there last night. I don't know any of you by names. Y'all just have to excuse me. It's a little, little short, sis. Michelle, stand up, buddy. Give this girl a hand, praise. And don't tell me you ain't noticed nothing different about her. Man, me and Brother Flannery both was like, dude, we watched that girl grow in the Lord. Thank you. Brother Tura, I want you and your wife to stand. Yes, you, you know what? You and your wife stand. You, you, yeah, you, you, you and your wife. I want you to give them folks a hand. I watched them grow in the Lord. You see, because we've got a church here, y'all. Many churches got it together. You're blessed. You got a pastor that's not got his mind off them. Oh, be careful, Brother Harris. <laughs> I'm not against preachers golfing. I'm not against them having some fun outside the church. Owning their sporting vehicles. I'm not against all that. But you know what? It's good to know there's some of us, we got our heads stuck in the church, and that's just where it's at. We'd rather be here than out there. Your pastor's got that. He loves you. You can tell it. You love him. I thank you for it. We're going to close this scene and then we're through. But I want you to come up here. I want you to come stand right up here. I know you didn't talk about moving pews, but get as close as you can. <coughs> Show each other that you love each other. Sure. you the pastor. I'd like, I'd like to just interject some of the stuff that you're talking about is, is reflected in someone. I wonder if, Tim, would you come up here? This gentleman is part of what Brother Harris is talking about is happening in this church. If you turn around, sister, if you come up, sister Amanda. Oh, look here. Brown paper bags. <laughs> we, got we got something going on here. Oh, look at that. Okay, I recently graduated from high, high school, from college. <laughs> and um, throughout my whole time I was there, my husband um, encouraged me, even the time.